My name is Jose Escamilla and a filmmaker, UFO investigator. I'm glad to be here with uh, Star Knowledge TV and talking about some of the things that I'm doing and events that I'm planning to do uh, in the near future. I got started back in uh, 1994 when I discovered some uh, flying phenomenon over Roswell and Midway, New Mexico. Uh, turns out these objects appear to be living creatures of some kind and we gave them the name Rods, and they've become a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, I get people from all over the world that send me footage of these things, and uh, they're like flying snakes, basically. Uh, they appear to be anywhere from a couple of feet long up to perhaps a hundred or more feet in length, traveling at high velocities, and um, they're appearing all, they've been appearing all over the world for the last 15 years. We've had, geez, close to about 200, maybe 300 reports of uh, eyewitness accounts where they actually had interaction with some of these things. We have footage of them from uh, the space shuttle taken over uh, orbiting Earth. Hundreds of rods flying in. We have footage of them under the water in the oceans, coming out of the ocean, entering the ocean. And they also seem to interact with base jumpers and parachutes, uh, parachutists. And we have footage of that. So I'm producing a new movie called Roswell Rods. And that's going to be capitalizing on all of the footage that we've accumulated over the last 15 years from all over the world. Recently there was a huge rod uh, film during the Germany and Spain um, soccer World Cup contest and that was in July, I think it was July 7th, 2010. And this rod flies right over the, the heads of the uh, soccer players down in the field and it's clearly nothing else but a rod. I mean it's way, uh, from the camera angle it was filming from high above and when they go slow motion, this rod flies right through the scene super fast. I also decided to make movies about UFOs. I was watching the Peter Jennings special on, on ABC, I think it was in 2001, 2002 I believe, and it was about UFOs and it really got me aggravated because first of all they show you know the stories about UFOs and everything else in the first hour. The second hour they get all these skeptics that come in and they destroy all that they presented in the first hour. So it's like, you know, it leaves everybody in chaos and, and you know, in questioning what's going on with this UFO phenomenon. So I decided to make a movie that nailed it once and for all. And so I created a film called UFO, The Greatest Story Ever Denied, released it in 2006. And I've recently finished a remake of the film in HD. Uh, and pl I'm planning to premiere this movie at the Grauman's Chinese Theater uh, in 2011 on February 25th. So I'm planning to have a premiere there and bring UFOs to the mainstream media, JQ public, regular public um, that doesn't think about UFOs, and have a movie premiere, Hollywood style, complete with the red carpet, the lights, cameras, action, paparazzi, and um, I plan to have standing out there to break the opening ceremonies among all the people that attend this movie premiere. And I know it's going to be packed house. It'll be the first time anywhere on, uh, at the Grauman's Chinese Theater that there has been a UFO documentary presented there in the history of the, the theater itself. And uh, it'll, I'll be the first filmmaker ever to have a, my own movie premiere there at Grauman's Chinese Theater without any studio support, just the support of the people, sponsors. And it is a grassroots movement, and we're going to carry it out. UFO, The Greatest Story of the United is the first of a trilogy of films that I created. Uh, the second one being UFO, The Greatest Story Ever Denied uh, 2, Moon Rising. And this is about all of the NASA footage that's out there and the photographs that, uh, the, from the Apollo missions that NASA has deliberately tampered with and hidden from the public the true structures that are up, up on the moon's surface. Um, when I was doing UFO Part 1, I did a segment on the moon, and I never thought about it, you know, because I always said, ah, oh, they landed on the moon, so big deal. But when I started looking at some of the structures that were appearing in these photographs, I decided to make a whole film about it. And Moon Rising does have some uh, action-packed information there for everyone who wants to look at that film. Um, the third one of the trilogy is going to be The Human Record, and this basically just traces all the way back from the beginning of time the people that have been the record keepers of UFO phenomena throughout history. I'm just going to touch lightly on some of the ancient uh, petroglyphs and things that show drawings of what appear to be UFOs that these uh, record keepers of those eras um, put together. But this is primarily about the present time recordists of the human history of UFOs. 
And there's millions of people now that have been filming UFOs all over the world. The internet, YouTube, and other venues have brought more information to the public eye than has ever been before in the thousands of years since UFOs started appearing. So the human record is the third and final film of the trilogy. Um, also in the interim, I'm doing a film uh, in the IMAX format, large screen, and it's going to star myself, uh, Chief Standing Elk, and Wes Studi, who was uh, the actor that was on uh, Dances with Wolves, Last of the Mohicans, and recently he was in Avatar. Uh, this movie is called The Planet Moon, which is what I feel the moon really is. When I found the full color photography of the moon on the USGS and Department of Defense website, I was shocked to realize that the moon is in full color. It's not a black and white uh, orb as we've been, you know, told for all these years. Uh, it is in fact a full color environment on the moon. You can even see clouds, you can see water down there. And this is all from the Clementine mission taken in 1994. 1.8 million digital photographs were taken. I've downloaded perhaps about 800 of the photos. So there's a, a you know, million more photos out there that I haven't even had access to that NASA's sitting on. But when you see the full color photography of the moon, it totally amazes you that you've not been told this before. Uh, as I say, the moon is not a f you know, uh, black and white desolate piece of rock. It's full of color. There appear to be gold mountains there. Uh, water vapor, you can see clouds, you can see, uh, as I said, greenery too. So there's vegetation on the surface of the moon. And there are other things, there are structures there. You can see huge buildings, towers, domes. You can see clear domes that inside there are buildings and greenery and such. So I believe that the moon has been a base for ancient civilizations that have lived there. Maybe they're still there. Uh, I think there's some, someone on the far side of the moon, and it's definitely not us. Um, I think NASA has to fess up, you know, if they did go to the moon with the Apollo missions, then it should be easy tomorrow to send off an Apollo capsule up there with a couple of astronauts in it and land on the moon again. You know, they're talking now we're not going to get there until 2012, uh, 2020 or 2030. I mean, what's the big deal? You know, you should be able to get there now with stuff that's already proven to have worked. Um, and I, you know, NASA has been really, has been playing dirty ball with everybody. I mean, they've known there was water up there. They uh, initiated to bomb the moon, you know, as a, a way of looking for water, when India, two months before, had already said, look, we already discovered water on the surface of the moon. And now India has come out with another report that there is, in fact, water, not only on the surface, but there's water coming from inside the moon. So, you know, we've never been told the truth. And on my film, Moon Rising, the slogan is, uh, we lied about everything. And that was told to us by a NASA insider who passed away, but that delivered us a lot of information that NASA did not want you to know. So, Moon Rising is a film that you need to see and catch up on to what's going on with our moon, our planet moon. So, um, it's been nice talking for the Star Knowledge TV. Uh, Chief, it's good to see you, good to talk to you again, and uh, Alan. Um, I appreciate you coming down and filming me here for the Star Knowledge TV. Anything you want from me, I'm there for you. Come on, people!